ResiTaps by Max for Cats is a Max for Life audio effect that takes the concept of Ableton Live's resonators to the next level. Five separate delay lines are added, one for each of the five resonators. Resonators and delays can be turned on and off independently. With all resonators switched off, ResiTaps works as a pure multi-tap delay. However, the real fun and sound design possibilities start when you combine the two. Real-time resonator tuning is made possible by integrated MIDI sidechain routing, which can be used with a MIDI controller or the MIDI input of another track. Resonators can therefore be instantly adjusted to precisely match the music. Scale awareness integration is planned for the official release of Ableton Live 12. Also included is the ability to use an LFO to modulate the resonators. ResaTaps is available as a self-installing Live Pack for Live 11.3 and higher and requires Max for Life. It includes a built-in help lesson in English and German and 20 presets. Each Max for Life audio effect parameter is also fully annotated, which can be viewed in the info view when hovering over the parameter. Let's check out a demo of some of the included presets before we look at all the features of ResiTaps. Okay, so now let's look at all the features in ResiTaps, what they do and how they also work together. So I'm going to start with the heart of the device and that is the resonators and delay section. So first up, something that we do not have in Ableton Live's resonators is the routing section where we can choose between MIDI and frequencies. We're going to look at MIDI for now, which is basically what the resonators device in Live has. So here up at the Rs, we can turn the resonators on and off and then with the first one, we can set the root note that the other resonators are based on, which can be set in semitones here. So this 12 would be an octave, for example. So let's try this, for example, here on the drums. So it goes from C minus one to C five and this from minus 24 to plus 24. And right below this each we have the fine tuning in cents from minus 50 to 50 as usual. Then when we go to frequency we can set it in hertz. So you can create quite different results this way as well. I'm going to switch back to MIDI for now. Up here we've got the delays that we can independently turn on and off. So for example if I turn all these off and just turn the delays on and make settings we suddenly have a multi-tap delay. So that can be quite fun to be used as well, but together you can get the most amazing results. Here you can set it either in milliseconds, what we've got now as an option, or in note measures, all the way to a half note. And right underneath this, we've got the feedback that we can dial in for all the five delay lines independently. So if I stop this, you can hear that the feedback keeps going. I'm going to turn this off again. And then underneath that, we've got the panning for the five resonators and delays. So no matter if you've got resonator and delay on or just one of each, you can set the panning and that'll do something. So if I turn these off, you can hear that it's kind of, it's not completely going hot right because we're, we've got dry wet set less than 100, so now we can hear that's on the left. Let's 
take this back in. And then underneath we've got the gain setting for both the resonators and delays. And one thing I hadn't mentioned yet before for the frequency setting is that here in this case the resonators are independent of each other. So whereas in MIDI you got the first one that sets the root note and the other ones are set relative to it in semitones. Under frequencies you can set them for each in hertz and so they can act completely independently which means you can create more things as well this way. Let's go back to this. Now we're going to look at this section here. So first up we've got the resonator mode. That basically is uh, similar to the modes in life's resonators. So mode A is more realistic sounding in terms of true resonation. So let's turn the resonator one on again. Right, so this is what it sounds like and then with B. And, and B, as you can already hear, it's better to use with lower pitches or if you're in frequency mode with lower frequency settings in hertz. And then here we can set the decay time of the resonators. So basically the amount it takes for them to be silent again after it's got an input signal. So let's try this out. And so the, the higher the amount is, that is set, the more total the result is also, as you can hear. So if I'm going back down, It just is a little bit more resonant, but not as much. So this could be actually nice to just use for drums. Whereas this is quite extreme for drums. You might like the effect sometimes, but not necessarily always. So then we've got constant and that basically holds the decay time constant regardless of the pitch because if you disable it, lower notes will decay longer than higher ones. So not quite as noticeable on drums. And then at the bottom we've got the color parameter for resotaps and here you can adjust how bright the sound is supposed to be. So let's turn this all the way down. And then slowly go up. And so you can hear that it becomes more bright and also more resonant at the same time. So here I can select an input. So as you can see, it can either be all ins, computer keyboard, my audio interface, which has MIDI as well, and then also internal MIDI tracks in the set. So I'm going to select the second MIDI track on which I have a clip. And then one thing that is important is you're going to have to use either pre-FX or post-FX. Unfortunately, the Max for Life object sets post-mixer as the default because it works for both audio and MIDI, but for MIDI, post-mixer doesn't do anything. So if that's selected, the MIDI side chaining is not gonna work. So I'm gonna select post-FX. So in this case, that would mean if I have anything in terms of MIDI effects on the track, then those would be taken into consideration as well. And what's also important, you have to have the routing set to MIDI. It does not work with frequencies. So either select mono or poly. With mono, the first resonator and its root note are set by the incoming MIDI note. And with poly, all of the resonators that are active can be tuned with the um, incoming MIDI notes. I'm gonna turn this on and then press play. So here you can see the MIDI notes that I have in there. I'm 
Maybe turn delay off so that we don't get the delay. And then instead turn on the other resonators as well. And let's go to poly. If we turn this on to mode A, then this would sound better in this case actually. Turn it off. So yeah, that's all there is to MIDI side chaining. Of course, you could also play it live if you like. So you can adjust any melodic material as well. Like if you have chord progressions, you could have MIDI tracks that are side chained that follow the chord progression. And so things can be a lot more musical while using resonators. And scale awareness is planned to be built in for the official release of Live 12. I'm going to turn this off again. And then we also have a modulation section for the resonators. So we can either set it to sync, which means that it'll be synced to live's transport, but then the LFO will only run when live's transport is also running. And then we set it in note measures. So let's maybe try that first. So this is a pretty high amount that I've set here already. So this is quite extreme. Small amounts might most often be more useful to use. But for the sake of demonstrating the different waveforms that we have for the LFO as well, I'm going to turn it all the way up again. So we've got sine wave, sawtooth up, sawtooth down, triangle, rectangle, and sample and hold. I'm going to take this down again. Then we can try different sync rates. Or we also have the frequency setting where we can set the LFO time in frequencies, in, in hertz. go up again. Yeah, so that's the modulation. And then next up, we've got a filter that we also have in the original resonators from Ableton Live. We can turn on the filter or off if we don't want it. And this one actually filters the incoming audio before it gets passed to the resonators or the delay. And we've got four filter types. We've got low pass. High pass, band pass, and notch. And below here we can set the frequency, cut off. this a little. And then here we've got the output section where we have a limiter that we can turn on and off. Quite often it's recommended to have it on because the output can get quite high, especially if the gains are set fairly high and not reduced because, you know, you, you have a lot of resonation building up. So it can be turned off and on. Then here we've got the stereo width that we can set in percentages. The actual result you're getting also depends on the pan settings here of the individual resonators or delays. And then here we've got the output gain. So if things get too loud as well, we can also turn the gain down. 
And then last but not least, we've got the dry wet setting where we can decide how much of the dry sound, so the incoming audio and the affected signals or what ResiTaps is creating should be passed out again of the device. So we can set it to 100% as well. Or anything in between. You can find a link for the pack in the description below and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments.